full of clever people who can repurpose and republish. So data.gov.uk, it's there. It's there for anyone everywhere in the world to avail itself of. The data is available under a new uh, Crown Commons license that doesn't presume anything except you don't do harm with it. Okay. Is this new data? Well, in many cases it's not. It's just stuff that was either hard to find or was previously published as a PDF file. Uh, it's a place where it's a single point of access, a single point to find. There are many, there are thousands and thousands of websites. One of the missions of the new government is to close down websites. There are far too many websites. Every department and quango and bits and pieces thinks it has to have its own. We're thinking of trying to move the assumption here to the App Store model, that the common platform actually is often the data. And why shouldn't you expose the data and then have the market develop innovative applications around and on it. So this is why we argue so strongly for it. There is some geekery around here. One of the interesting things we're also doing here is using the new linked data standards. Uh, the data access language for the web is a language called Sparkle. It allows you to query across the web to retrieve data from behind what was traditionally uh, closed walls. The complexities of working out how to dereference a, uh, a particular database is partly solved with the new standards that we're trying to promote. Not all of the data in data.gov.uk is like this, probably only 10 or 15 percent is. Linked data formats where the content, the individual data is given a URI or a web address. If I want to know what the current vehicle excise tax on a particular car is, there's a URI web address for it. One of them is issued by the government, it's definitive. So I don't have to update 3,000 websites on the current change in the budget on that one fact. Okay. At any one time, it's reckoned 30% of all government websites contain the wrong information about budget-related items that are changing on a yearly basis. Okay. It's also a place where we can uh, get the public to uh, put up apps and show us what they can do, where we can go out for bright ideas. This is one of the applications that was a bit eye-catching. I'm not saying it's the best one that I could give you. But it was the top download on the Android and the iPhone for a couple of weeks in the UK, Asborometer. And Asbo is an antisocial banning order, um, and it's issued by the police. Uh, this is from the Home Office. This is a, a spreadsheet file that nobody thought would be of any interest to anybody. It doesn't identify individuals. It just tells you what the, uh, what the rates are of various antisocial uh, uh, activities. Uh, it uses uh, geolocation on the iPhone and gives you your ASPO rating for the area you're 